I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Let's bring in the voice of the Cougars. Greg Rubel joins us in studio. Be over in the Cougar Council Room. There's much to discuss, Greg. Not only is it a situation where we're dealing with the new Big 12 football scheduling format that's going to affect BYU for the next four years, but it's also in a way, the tip-off for BYU basketball with an exhibition. So uh, let's let's also ahead. shout out women's soccer, Big 12 tournament time today. Semi well. Amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Semifinals UCF. against UCF. Big day. Big day. So, granted, I wanted TCU. And women's I wanted hoops. another crack at TCU in soccer, but eh, whatever. Just get to the championship. Let's just go there now. Let's just go to soccer. Let's go to soccer. They're going to they right? get a one seed? If they win out this week, they will. I think they will. Yeah, yeah I think you so. think they, so. they we, need we, to win the championship yeah. to Which means the beating UCF tonight and either Texas or Texas Tech on Saturday. Texas Tech is a better RPI game, obviously. Yeah. I, 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 get the, I think if they take home the trophy, and I think they are taking home the trophy, they'll be a one seed next month. And then you can get up to four games at home to the College Cup. That that's, would that's be the formula. awesome. That's the formula. That's four cool. games to the Final Four. Let's that go. would be incredible. A two, so let's say they lose in the, let's say they beat UCF, but lose in the final, heaven forbid. But... Is that, is that secure in your mind, a two seed? I feel like BYU? it's a two, and two's three games at home. Which so uh, either way, BYU is going to play a lot of November soccer at Southfield, mm -hmm. and that is huge news. That yeah. is great. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay, we got that one out of the way. Check. All right. <laughs> We're good there, and they're playing at a super high level. Uh, you yeah. know what? They're on a roll, and I think oh, they're my. on a mission a bit. A bit. Like, 6 nothing or Oklahoma, that's a message sender. <laughs> yeah. Right? This is a team that was arguably the best offense in the country, Two first-teamers, no individual honors in the postseason. Not that that's like the only driving force. They but were chapped I, I, by I, that. I, I think BYU is out to show that we're yes. a lot more than you think we were. Yes. We're a tr and and the, the great thing about BYU in soccer is it's a true team. Mm -hmm. Maybe what held them back a little bit was the fact they're so balanced. It can come from so many different places that there wasn't that one standout every night that was like, wow, three, four goals a week. But that's the beauty of the team is that it's a true team. And, and, and they're a, 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 an amazed, amazing thing to watch. Yes. Right now. Case yeah. in point, the five different goal scorers they had in that 6-0 yep. <laughs> victory. Just wait until the second half. We'll just Starters, subs, it's coming from everywhere. It anyway, matter. go Cougs tonight. Okay. On to men's basketball. Yes. Exhibition tonight. We just said what we're hoping to see, which is largely some solid execution, good three-point shooting. What are you hoping to see from BYU in this exhibition tonight? Well, I, I, I don't know how much you learn from a game like tonight. I think you probably learn more from what they did to Stanford on the weekend. You know, that's really encouraging, the fact that they played that way against a good team. Um, so they already have something in the pocket that says, okay, we got something here. You're not going to see the team we're going to see in a month or two because you're, there, there'll be some guys that won't play tonight. There are some guys coming back from things. So it's not going to be the, tr the, the full team we're going to see in a while. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's maybe, uh, that might, you know, uh, dim expectations just for the next couple of weeks a little bit because there are some guys I really want to see. Uh, Dawson Baker primarily. And, and the fact that he's not quite ready to go right now is a bummer for me because I think he's going to be one of my favorite players to call this mm -hmm. year. Uh, I, you know, and and uh, the addition of Dawson Baker and Ali Khalifa, these are starters. These are big minute guys. Uh, these are um, all conference type guys in their previous leagues. They add to an experienced core, and I think those two guys are going to add a lot. And so it's only a, you know, it's only two additions, but I think it's big for what they've been. And although they're not certainly the same guy, you can tell you can look at them like one's not the other, but they do a lot of the same things well. You know, uh, good shooters, good three-point shooters, really good free-throw shooters. Dawson is nails in late-game free-throw situations. That's going to show up at some point this year. Um, and I just love what they potentially bring to BYU because of how much they've already had on the floor at their previous schools. To bring in two major-minute starter-type guys, big-number guys to your team is huge. Um, and so we may not see all of them immediately. Dawson's a, a little while away, and Ali's still working his way back. And, uh, and Dallin Hall is still kind of nursing. So this may not be the team yet, okay. but the signs are really encouraging already. Yeah. And you've got an exhibition game. You already have one in pocket, as you mentioned. You can play up to two. One is secret, although not so secret nowadays. Yeah. Uh, and then Monday is the season opener at Houston Christian. But next Friday, we've got the national runners up coming yeah. in. The, hey, football played TCU, national runner up. BYU playing San Diego State. That's the game where I'm like, okay, we'll start to get an inkling of what BYU is. So in the next kind of week and a half here, what are you hoping to see, not just tonight? Yeah, and I don't know how much we have to put on it because we're not going to still have probably the entire BYU team at that point yet. Um, but uh, on a Friday night in the Marriott Center, um, you know, Marriott Center magic and, and, and get San Diego State playing in a, in a, in a, in a hostile uh, intense environment. Let's just give it a shot and see what happens. But I, I think uh, ultimately it's all about 
you know, leading into Big 12 play. It's a really home-heavy schedule, which is good for BYU. I think there's enough wins on there to give yourself, a, a, you know, a decent record and a decent resume. And it's all about peaking in, uh, in late December, early January, which I think BYU can do. They should be healthy by then, presuming nothing else happens health-wise in these early games, and, uh, and, and give it a go. But uh, I, I, I hope and I think the team will embrace the specter of, um, of, of being overlooked. You know, BYU's not mm -hmm. been that team for years, years yeah. and years. Whatever league they've been in, they've always been a top-tier team in that league. Well, well, now they're not viewed that way. How does BYU embrace that and, and have that kind of uh, become part of their team mindset? And they become suddenly the underdogs, suddenly the, the, the scrappy team, suddenly the team that, uh, you know, can spring the occasional upset. And, 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 and that could be a fun thing to, to, to see how it shapes you know, the composition of this team, how they how they kind of view themselves that way. Yeah, it's, it's the football team embracing the night, and it's the basketball team embracing the underdog role. And right. I think BYU operates well in football that way. I think basketball, yeah. Well, these, these are I good players a with good a good coaching with staff and, 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 and recent success and, and, and years of history. That doesn't just go away because they entered a tougher league. It'll be a bigger grind and a taller task, certainly. But yeah. we expect them to meet the challenge. Yeah, something to prove for Jackson Robinson, uh, something to prove for Dawson and Ali and Trevin Nell. Noah Waterman. Uh, 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 Johnson Noah Waterman has, has yeah. made leaps from from last year to this year. How does that show up? Mm -hmm. um, because last year I think he was still kind of finding his way, and 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 the signs are encouraging from Noah this year already. Uh, the guys you mentioned just there. They're, they're, there's a there's a lot of fun things to anticipate about this team this year. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're and Mark is leading the charge here. He's putting a lot of value on the continuity because you mentioned only two real newcomers are going to impact the team now, but the core is back. The strength is experience. Yes, the, the experience strength is experience is yeah. back. So you with that in mind, is the target in non-conference play, let's say ten and three, would that be like? Uh, a good target record coming out of those 13 non-conference games? Yeah, sure. Double-digit wins is a, is a good bar to set. I think, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then when you get in the league, uh, you know, uh, what, 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 what does success look like in the first year in the Big 12? Um, in football, I stated that, you know, well, success in year one in the Big 12 would be postseason play. And I think success in year one of the Big 12 in basketball would be postseason play, some kind Amen. of postseason play. Yes. With the new NIT shift, um, let's say – Let's say nine, eight or nine Big 12 teams make the, the big dance. Well, the next two, 10 and 11, automatically make the NIT on net, um, and then others are at light. So if you were, you know, uh, if you were something beyond 11 to 14 in that league, you could be playing postseason basketball. Heck yeah. And, and, and I think that's, that, that, that's within reach for BYU. Yeah, find six plus wins in league, and you yeah. got a great shot at postseason play. Yeah, yeah. Greg Rubel is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, let's flip over to BYU football as we prognosticate a little bit about what we are hoping to see and what we want to see from the potential Big 12 football scheduling model. Uh, Jeremy and I are in agreement that the pod that BYU, we, we like the pod idea. Okay? So we're thinking four, four 14 pods, pods yes. right? Four yeah. fours, yeah. Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah and BYU's pod, so you'd see those teams every year. You'd you, think that would be a, a pod, yeah. Do yeah. you differ from that idea mm -hmm. at all? Like, are you in favor of divisions over pods? What do you want no, to see? No, I, 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 I wouldn't mind if it's one big league with no divisions, but scheduling pods I'm in favor of. So if, if that is the four-team pod, BYU, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, that's one pod. You could have a Texas pod. Mm -hmm. You could have a Midwest pod, which includes Colorado, and then you have an Eastern pod, which could include Iowa State. Um, there's some differentiation whether, whether Colorado or Iowa State ends up moving or Houston could be part of an Eastern pod. But either way, I like that. I, I think if you had a four-team Texas pod, the four-team Utah, Arizona pod, the Midwestern pod, which is the two Kansases, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, Colorado, but Iowa State with Cincy, UCF, and West Virginia. And now you could play your three uh, pod mates every year, and then you play two from each of the other three pods every year. And then alternate that the and next alternate. year. And alternate. So, yeah, so, so that, those, those are your nine games. And, and that way I think it would spread it around pretty evenly. Hans was telling me in the post game, you know, you know, he's a little bit sad because he's afraid that, you know, like our trip to Morgantown this weekend, how many more of these will we get? you know, based on the rotation. Because uh, one of the beauties of, of the Big 12 is the new venues and the new sites and the new sounds and, and the new fan bases. And, 
and I'm just really, I've never been to Morgantown in my life. And I'm, I'm looking for, I hope it's not, you know, one of only a couple of times I get to do it. So I want to see them still kind of stay on a regular rotation, however that works out. Sure. But th I, I've loved the Big 12 so far. That, I, I yeah. just love the novelty of it. It's been fantastic. That pot idea would guarantee BYU a home game against every Big 12 team at least once every four years and a road game every against four every years. Big 12 yes. once every four years. Yes. So, so in the cycle of the average athlete, you got at least one opportunity in every school. To see everybody. Which would be awesome. Yeah. If they vary a lot from what we just discussed, I will be surprised. I, I think it that seems just to make a lot makes of sense, sense, right? right? Yes. Yeah. And, and much as the basketball, you've already got the basketball formula figured out, um, how many teams you'll play. I, I think they're in a pretty good spot at 16. Yeah. Who knows whether Brett Yormark's going to hang there for a while or not, <laughs> but it feels good right now for the moment. Does Gonzaga enter? Does UConn? Yeah. Like, who knows, right? right? But in men's hoops, yeah, we know mm -hmm. 20 uh, conference games next year up from 18. Yeah. All right, let's finish with this. Uh, we've been asking all of our guests recently, what their opinion is on the most winnable game remaining on BYU's schedule. And Oklahoma and Oklahoma State feel like juggernauts right now, so everyone's kind of leaning towards West Virginia or Iowa State. Where do you fall in that conversation? Yeah, we'll go Iowa State home because it is a home game at 8-15 in, in November. Um, and, and Iowa State, although they've shown really well, I, I think that's probably the most vulnerable. So you, uh, you handicap at Iowa State, uh, then West Virginia, and then to me, um, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma are almost sixes right now because uh, one may be better than the other, but you're getting one at home. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I kind of go T3 on those, tie for third on, on the last one. Um, Oklahoma losing to Kansas probably changes my opinion a little bit there. Had they swept through and still be undefeated, I'd put Oklahoma as the toughest game. But I think Oklahoma State, the way they look right now, and playing in Stillwater to end the year, uh, there's a lot happening on that night. So that'll be tough. But I, I think uh, these next two weeks, I think BYU – finds a way. If they're going to get bowl eligible, it's going to happen probably in these next two weeks. Yep. And, and, and then if not, then you set yourself up for a Herculean task in the yes. final two weeks. But uh, I love the fact that there's intrigue, that there's suspense, there's drama, uh, there's bowl games in play, and, and it's all happening at a really high level. I mean, this is, this is uh, you know, uh, what was it, uh, Dan Hawk? Uh, this is Big 12 football, brother. You know, <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is what it is. We had him on the yeah. show a few years ago, and, yeah, we talked about the intramurals. Thing. It was still yeah. Yeah. Well, Greg, thanks for the time, man. Always a we'll, pleasure. Uh, we'll see you. You know where to find me. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes you do. Indeed. Yeah.